Let's try that now. How about that? You may have preferred it the other way. I don't know. Time will tell, I guess. Well, uh, happy Mother's Day. And uh, it's so good to be here together. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Molly uh, McFadden to come up. Molly's going to read our scripture for us. Come on up, Molly. Now, <clears throat> I love the fact that our young folks are getting up and publicly reading scripture. I think that's a very po positive thing. And so, Molly, thank you for being willing to do this. Now, before we read this verse, I would like all the moms, since this is a verse about moms and grandmothers, would you please, all the moms, please stand in, in all of our assemblies. Would you please stand? And this reading is in honor of you. Yes, you can do that. And if you'll, uh, if you'll remain standing after the reading of this verse, and I want to have a special prayer for our moms, okay? Mm -hmm. Second Timothy 1.5 I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Thank you, Molly, very, very much. Appreciate it. If you'll notice, Molly's reading had mother and grandmother, and those are so very important in our lives. The strength of uh, this church is seen in the fact of, uh, of what these moms and, and grandmas do in terms of our families and, and, and giving us some spiritual strength. And I want to thank God for that and honor you at the same time. So let's pray. Father in heaven, what a tremendous blessing this church has through the strong faith of these moms and grandmas. Father, you have blessed us richly. I know this road is not always easy. The journey sometimes is tough. I know for some Mother's Day is as much of a heartbreak as it is a joy. And, but Father, you have uh, used people out of brokenness. You have raised up mothers, uh, Father, to help develop the moms in our church. And I am so thankful for that. And we ask your blessings upon each one of these today. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Mother's Day. One more time. Let's have a Okay, so someone told me the goal on Mother's Day is to get everybody out early. Is that a good goal? Kim's hollering amen about five times over there. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, uh, we can try, uh, but we'll, we'll do our best. Also, uh, you know, uh, it's a, not a special day is Mother's Day, but it's also another special day for us. We, I want to ask Spencer and his family to come up. And the elders, if our elders would come up, please. Uh, we have another blessing for our families in this church. Uh, in support of our moms and our families is uh, adding Spencer to the staff as our youth minister. And so come on up here, guys. And... Uh, we want to have a blessing and a prayer. Welcome home. Welcome to Wash Ferry Road. And we uh, look forward to serving together. Uh, and let's see here. David, would you do the honors, please, to ask a blessing over them as they initiate their work with us. Father, we thank you for the way you work things out. We thank you for Spencer coming to us uh, many years ago as a, as a young sophomore in college. and. Uh, growing and developing as an intern and, and just his desire to, to touch people's lives and uh, his, his studies continuing and, and touching people's lives wherever he went, whether in Arkansas or Texas or here. Um, and so I, I thank you for his desire to be back here, uh, one of our own, um, and that we've poured into and he's poured into so many. Uh, we thank you for Ashley and, and then uh, Grayson coming along just 18 months ago and for their work together, for bringing them together uh, as husband and wife, but, and also as partners in the gospel. We thank you for her faith and her uh, 
uh, her legacy that, that she has and Spencer has too in, in the faith uh, of, so many, of so many years of, uh, from family to family to, to, to bless others. Bless them and their work here. May this be a time in their life where they grow together as a couple and as parents. Uh, as we pour into them and out of the overflow of that, they pour into uh, the families and the youth here and, uh, and the team that is already in place that, that will continue to grow. Thank you for loving us and blessing them and us with this opportunity and all to your glory through Jesus. Amen. Hey, Grayson, can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get through this book of First Corinthians. We're at the last chapter, chapter 16. So uh, open up your Bibles or your phone or uh, whatever you normally do to look. And we're going to fly through this chapter quickly and wrap it up with talking a little bit more about Mother's Day. And then we'll, uh, we'll see uh, where, that, uh, where that ends up on our time, okay? Uh, you know, uh, this whole book has been a great book of unity and encouragement to love. And, uh, of course, it has the great chapter on love in 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, 15, he has that great uh, emphasis on the gospel and it being the number one thing, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And we've talked about our commitment as the church at Watchbury Road is to keep the gospel the center of everything we do. And uh, so as he wraps, us this, that wraps up this book, this is all uh, about personal concern and personal remarks that he makes in chapter 16. The first, uh, the first four verses, he's concerned about the poor saints that are in Jerusalem, the poverty that's there, and he asked the Corinthian church to give something back toward that. After all, they, the reason they exist is because people came out of that church and converted folks. And so now he's saying, look, look back at the mother church, so to speak, and give because they have some needs. And here's what he says. Now about the collection for God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I'll give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable for me to go also, uh, they'll, they can accompany me. So basically what he says, here, he says, I have a personal concern for the church in Jerusalem. And we're going to take up some money to help them out. The kind of what we do on our first Sunday contribution, we take up money specifically to help some of our members that are in, in, in dire situations. And so they were taking up a special collection for the church in Jerusalem. This was, this was beyond whatever they regularly did for themselves. This is a special collection. And he says a good way to do that, look, you're getting together every Sunday. Just just pass the hat and gather it up when you're there. That way, when I come, it's a practical matter, by the way. When I come, I don't have to go around, uh, you know, gathering it all up. It'll all be gathered up, and I can just take it, and we can get it to the folks in Jerusalem. So basically, Paul is showing his concern and giving them a practical way to make this happen. That's all it is. Don't make more out of the text than what's there, okay? He's just saying, we got to gather up some funds. Here's a good way to do it. And when you do this, we're going to help the brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. Why? There's poverty. There's needs. And that's one thing I love about this church is when there becomes a specific need, when there's a relief effort, when there's something happening, you always respond. Thank you for being personally concerned about some people that you don't even know or haven't met that live in another country because you have the heart that wants to help. And that, he's challenging the Corinthians. And then he's going to give them some, uh, 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 he's going to tell them about his personal desire to visit. He says, after I go through Macedonia, I'll come to you for I'll be going through Macedonia. Perhaps I'll stay with you a while or even spend the winter so that you can help me on my journey whenever I go. I don't want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you and uh, if the Lord permits. So basically he's just saying, look, I want to come and see you, but I, want to, I don't want to just come and just rush through there and not really get to spend any time with you. I want to come when I can stay and be with you a little while. Have you ever known people like that? You've had a relationship with in ministry and you just want to spend some time with them? That's what happens to us when we go on some of our mission efforts. We've done work with Ricardo for so many years and we just wanted to spend some time in his church, on his turf, 
finding out about his, uh, his folks that he's reaching out to. It's just a joy when you partner with people and you want to spend some time with them. And I'm telling you, uh, uh, no matter, I, I love our live stream. Matter of fact, we got a couple here today from Kentucky that's come through that's been watching our live stream. They're visiting today. Uh, and I love the fact that it's connected us with so many people at, uh, around the country because now we're partnering in a way that we weren't able to do before. Uh, and I love it when they visit because I don't care how much you partner online, there's nothing like physically seeing someone. Matter of fact, someone asked him, Mike, you think there's still people out there not coming to church, uh, uh, you know, just watching live stream? I said, well, I don't know. There might be people who still scare. One of them said, no, they're, no, they're just sitting in their pajamas at the living room. It's just more comfortable. Well, I get that, uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, it can be easy to get in a habit that says, uh, I, just, uh, I just don't want to make the effort to get up. But I'm telling you, when you miss the brothers, you miss something. But not you, we miss something. We miss something when you're not here, when you're not present. I get something out of the fact that you are physically here and greet me and encourage me and shake my hand. I need your ministry of presence at this church. Paul wanted to have that with the Corinthians. Then he's going to give them some uh, personal acceptance and encouragement of friends. So he, first he mentions Timothy, then he mentions Apollos. These are guys he partnered with in the gospel. And, and he even gives them that encouragement that Brandon talked about last uh, uh, the week that he preached to be on guard and to uh, be uh, courageous and to stand firm in the faith there. And ultimately, the, the greatest verse, do everything in love, he says. And he mentions the house of Stephanus and uh, some other folks that had gathered up. He says, these people refreshed me. They, uh, they energized me. Uh, when I was with them, and I, he wants the church there to greet them and enjoy being together. There's something about a forever family being together that's important. And then he tells them in the last few verses of the final greetings of this chapter, it says, the churches in the province of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord, and so does the church that meets at their house. So, matter of fact, this is the way a lot of churches are. They just met in house churches all around the country and and we we've had house churches here and still do and so those are beneficial and there's something about having people in your home that is powerful St something about sticking your feet under somebody else's table and sharing a meal and talking and being together that's really really good you know you can kind of hide in an audience you can kind of walk in sneak in here and hide out there behind somebody and I, I can't really have that conversation with you but when we're, you're at my table and we're sharing and talking, and we can just be real folks discussing real situations with each other. A lot of good ministry takes place. And Aquila and Priscilla had that kind of ministry happening in their house. And he says he wants to, he sends their greetings. All the brothers here send greetings. And then he gives you this one that's kind of interesting. Greet one another with a, a with a what? A holy kiss. Now, are you ready? Are you now, right now, are you uncomfortable about who you sat beside? <laughs> we're going to practice this. No, we're really not. <laughs> Some of you are worried. I see people looking, where can, where's the door? Can I get out? Someone said, can we just draw a kiss? Can we just, you know, yeah, oh, oh, whatever works. The whole idea, right? There's affection and love, whether it's, whether it's the handshake, the hug, the, the holy kiss, whatever greeting there. The, the point is not how to do a greeting. The point is to make sure greeting takes place. Some of you have done this. You've walked into a church and you've walked out and you, did not, you didn't get greeted. You didn't feel welcome. You didn't know where to go. No one helped you while you were there. Remember how that felt if you've done that before? I, I don't want one person that walks in our midst in any of our assemblies to ever, ever walk out of here ungreeted by the family of God. I know it's easy for us to say when you're in the middle of it, oh, man, our church is friendly, we're warm, whatever. Well, we are when we know each other. That's easy. 
But also, the problem is we're kind of a big country church. I mean, there are a lot of folks in here to kin to each other. You got to be careful what you say about each other, you know? And sometimes that makes us feel family and welcome, but it also sometimes makes a stranger hard to break into. We need to make sure we're always, that our circle doesn't look in, that our circle, that we're standing in a circle looking out. And we take care of each other in, but we also look out for someone that walks through these doors because I'm telling you, brokenhearted people every, every Sunday, every Wednesday walk through these doors. And we want to always be open to the broken. Then Paul writes something very personal. He says, I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand. He said, okay, you know, because he's had some folks scribe for him. But now he says, you know what, I want to write this. I want to take it, the pen in my hand and I want to write it. By the way, I don't care how much technology exists, it'll never replace what it means when someone takes the time to write you a personal note. It really means a lot. Paul wanted to make sure they got this. He said, and he records it. The Holy Spirit records it for us. That he took the time. To, I want to write this greeting in my own hand. If anyone does not love the Lord, a curse be on him. He said, hey, look, we, we're going the opposite way. We don't want to go that route. Instead, he says, come, O Lord. That's where we get the word you hear sometimes, Maranatha. Come quickly. One time I was uh, sharing with someone about, you know, sometimes the world just gets to you and it gets hard and you just see all these kinds of things happening and, and you just want to say, Lord, uh, would you just go ahead and come? I'm just, I'm ready to get out of all this mess. You ever felt like that? I mean, I felt like that. And I said that one time and then this young woman, she said, Mike, she said, I, I understand that, but can you, can you wait a little while? I, I got two children that aren't in the Lord. And I thought, wow, oh, you bet, you betcha. Uh, when we were in uh, Bogota, visiting Ricardo and his wife Estella, would you pl put that picture up of Estella? I think we have a picture of her. Sweet, sweet heart of a lady who's done ministry for many years. Has a mom's heart because I watched her as she interacted with the children, uh, the Venezuelan refugee children that, that ministered to that on that Saturday that we were there. And uh, as we were talking the day before we left about ministry and about planting the seed, and I mentioned something about so grateful they planted the seed in those children's lives. And, and that a lot of times I tell parents uh, uh, that, look, you, you've planted the seed, and sometimes your kids kind of get away from it. But look, take confidence because they've got a place to come back to when you've planted that seed, right? My, my mom and, and, the, and the, the church they took me to planted the seed of the gospel in my heart. And so I, and I got far away from that. But it gave me a place to come back to because it was planted in, the, in, my, in my heart. And as we were talking about that, she started tearing up, and Aaron scooted over beside her and put her arm around her and hugged her and tears were coming down Estella's face and because one of her kids isn't in the Lord and I saw the heart of a mom broken hearted at the same time a faithful heart to God I tried to encourage her some of you are in that situation it's hard isn't it it's difficult but the gospel, you can't change everything, but the gospel has the power to change people's hearts. And you planted it there. I want to encourage you to have confidence in that seed that you planted. You did good, and you need to know you did good. I also met another mother while I was in uh, Bucaramanga. And there was a convenience store right across from the hotel. And I walked across to the convenience store to buy, uh, to buy something. And there were, there were two uh, young women sitting on a brick wall there. <clears throat> when I walked, I walked in front of them, <clears throat> and one of, them, one of them looked at me. She said, hello, baby. 
that was the only English she knew. And I said, hello, and I, 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 I know very little. I, uh, um, mi espanol es muy poquito, you know, I mean, I, it's very little. <clears throat> but I tried to talk. Well, they were, two, they, they were prostitutes. So they had the, the phone, they had their, tele, their, their iPhone there, and they hit Google Translation, so they're telling me, and I'm saying, oh, nah, you know. Uh, <clears throat> And, but I, I talked to them for a minute. And then I told them, I said, look, I'm concerned. It, I'm concerned for your sake. It is dangerous on the streets. It's dangerous on the streets. Some of you, you've been on the streets. You know, right? And when I said that, this one of them typed me back a message and and she showed me a picture of her, her, her baby and her children. And she showed, And then I realized I'm not talking to a prostitute. I'm talking to a mom. And I gave her some money to, for her children. And she typed back that my giving was, made her feel disgraceful. And I said, no, no, baby, just, just broken, like we all are. She's no, more, she's no more broken than Mike Kelly. Or anybody said, she's just broken. You've got moms out there that are broken. And uh, I'm thankful we have our moms in here that know how to reach out to moms who are broken. Those were two different kinds of moms I, I met there. I, I didn't know enough and I'll, to share Jesus or to, to, to say anything about the gospel. I wish I had. I, I just, I didn't. You feel pretty helpless. Some of you, you know that feeling. You feel helpless sometimes even in the language you know, right? To help somebody's needs. But I thought of all the, all the places in the world that I could show up and meet different people. And when I got to thinking about it being Mother's Day, I, these are moms. Sometimes they're just moms, and they're just stuck in terrible situations and need rescue. And what rescues them is what rescues us, the grace of Jesus. And you know how he ends this book? He ends this book with two words. You can look at the last two verses. He ends this book with love and grace. Love and grace. I'm reading a little book Katrina's dad wrote about family relationships and uh, Terry Bass. And so uh, in it, I picked up a quote uh, out of where he says his, mo two model, his motto has become about his relationship is to show mercy and love them anyway. And I thought, you know, that's, that should be all of, our, all of our efforts. Show mercy and love people anyway, regardless. We love, we love everybody. We love everybody because God first loved me. That's the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He loved me enough to die for me, to give me hope. If you're not right with the Lord, I can't think of anything that would make your mom more proud than you getting right with God. Can you? My, um, my mom went on to be at the Lord back in December, right after Christmas. Uh, someone said something about, I saw you lost your mom, and, and I know what they mean by that. And, but I'm tempted to say, you know what? Someone's not lost when you know where they are. Uh, I didn't lose my mom. Uh, I know where she is. And where she is... It's because of the grace of God and the story of Jesus. And it's where you can be too when you trust in Jesus as the Lord of your life. If you have a need to respond with anything today, do so while we stand and sing.